Today we're introducing a brand new series to the channel called First Five, where I give you my thoughts and opinions, as well as everything you need to know after dedicating at least five hours of hands-on time to the newest games and console releases. Now this is not a review, but more along the lines of like a first impression, and today we're talking about the finals. Let me explain. Full disclaimer, I absolutely love this game. I've been playing it nonstop since it launched, so if I come off really positive, it's because I am. I'll be the first to admit, I'm not the biggest multiplayer first person shooter kind of guy. The only first person shooter I choose to play on my own has been Halo. But after I saw the reveal trailer, the first thing that caught my eye was that they were highlighting destructible environments. We haven't seen that implemented since like old Battlefield games, and then come to find out that the Embark Studios who developed and published this game came from Battlefield backgrounds, so I was already excited to see what the game turns out to be. But what's a new game release without a little bit of controversy? Right out the gate, Embark Studios did get some backlash when they were upfront about their usage of AI for the contestants and commentator voices, as comm director Sven Gruntenberg stated, it allows the team to work better and faster and do more with less. We will see how this continues to play out since both sides have valid points. I'm interested to know your thoughts, so let me know down below, how do you feel about AI creeping into game development? Now with that out of the way, let's jump in. The Finals is a team-based first-person shooter where you enter an arena with three teams of three. The main mode you'll be playing is called Quick Cash. There will be first one vault on the map that every team will need to get to in order to bring to a cash out and earn $10,000. But once you get a vault, you need to unlock it by starting a timer and waiting for it to pop out the cash box. And once you get a cash box, you can then take it to any cash out on the map. But now every single player in the game can see where you are. And once you load that cash box into a cash out, a timer will begin, and if you keep every other team from stealing it, you get the $10,000. Now where this game gets chaotic is when you are either waiting for the cash box to come out of the vault, or you're trying to protect or steal the cash out. The fact that every player is focused on the same exact objective is what I love most about this game. Because in turn, that means you get nonstop action. There's literally no downtime, and you're always either hunting or being hunted. I got really bored with Battle Royale because I don't want to spend my time looting. I'm so happy to see that Embark Studios didn't just copy and paste everyone's homework, but instead introduced a brand new concept. And the best part about that new concept is the way that everything in the arena can be destroyed. It is so satisfying and creates different ways you can approach every situation. Do you want to run through the wall or set an explosion and come from above or blow up the ground beneath so the cash out falls to the next level? I've personally encountered every single one of those scenarios. And one thing to note is that when you steal a cash out timer, it doesn't reset like it would in a King of the Hill style game. So this means you can strategize to take out the team guarding and steal it at the very last second to secure the win. The level design also complements the gameplay mechanics. There's so much elevation from tall buildings to cranes holding cash out stations, jump pads and zip lines everywhere to help you get around while not having to worry about taking any fall damage. And that right there is one of the best decisions they could have made because while not having to worry about fall damage, you can focus on the fun. Now when it comes to your team, you have three different classes to choose from, light, medium, and heavy with each of them having different weapons, gadgets, and specials that you can use to your advantage. Now, while all of them have their strengths and weaknesses, I feel that the medium class is the one every team needs at least one of, because man, I cannot tell you how many times the healing beam and the defibrillator have come in clutch for me to get me a win. While the light has more of a melee slash stealth focus, and the heavy on the other hand allows you to run through any wall and is more defensive with you being able to unlock a shield that your team can shoot through, but opponents can't. Now we typically ran about one of each or two mediums and a heavy, but I'm sure every trio will develop what combination works best for them. The finals really encourages teamwork, and that's just another major factor playing into why I'm hooked. I love working as a team, and when a game rewards that opposed to one team member trying to run ahead and take out an entire team on their own, it helps teach the importance of sticking together, because nine times out of 10, you're gonna get smoked if you try to take on a whole trio by yourself. 
Of course, like any free-to-play game, there's gonna be microtransactions and a battle pass waiting to take your money. Now, the outfits range from about $10 to $20, and the battle pass is $10, pretty typical. I don't engage much with any microtransactions, but it is nice just to see how customizable your character look is. When you buy any type of clothing, it works across all three classes. So while I still think $20 is way too much for an outfit, I'm happy it can work with more than one class and also goes for any clothing you earn just by playing the game. I should mention that there's also another game mode where it's four teams of three and it's all about earning money for kills and banking the money at a cash out station before you die and lose it all. But I personally didn't play much of that because I enjoyed the main mode quick cash so much more. And once you play the game for a little bit and you get feeling confident in your skills, you can jump into a quick cash tournament and ranked tournaments and see if you're the team that can make it to the final round. I can't tell you how many times I looked to see if they were gonna give us a release date for this game and then to see how they just stealth dropped it at the Game Awards, oh, what a moment. I'm so happy I now have this game to add into my regular rotations of multiplayer games and looking forward to see how Embark Studios supports its growth going forward. I can't recommend this game enough, if you can't tell, and you have absolutely nothing to lose. It's free to play, so if you haven't played it yet, go download it right after you finish this video and return back and let me know what you think down below. Now, if you enjoy this new series, then hit that like button already. And good news for you that going forward, I will be doing much more first five videos as this is a series I've been so excited to launch because let's be real, I currently do not have enough time to put a full review out on every single video game that comes out, but maybe one day I'll get there. So let me know if there's a certain game you're wanting to see a first five on and that's your cue to go subscribe and my cue to get back to being a dad.